So I'm the founder and CEO of FinBrain Technologies. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, FinBrain and the problems we're focusing on and some general problems with like uh, the neural network performance optimization and hyperparameter search and how to increase the uh, generalization capabilities of deep neural networks. Uh, so the first thing, we develop uh, deep learning algorithms for analyzing financial data sets. Uh, we're taking into account different financial data sets and we feed them into uh, the deep learning algorithms. The algorithms run the learning process and then we predict the future price movements of the specific assets such as like uh, the asset listed under S&P 500, NASDAQ, NYSE. Uh, indices and like cryptocurrencies and foreign currency pairs. Uh, so on our website, as you can see, we provide like more than 6,000 assets, the future predictions for more than 6,000 financial assets. Uh, and yeah, uh, traders and investors from more than 80 countries uh, right now are <coughs> signed up to our services and mostly the people from the US and Canada and United Kingdom are utilizing our algorithms on their investment decisions. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the uh, yeah, I'm gonna point that. Yeah, the yellow line here is the historical price data, and the blue one, if you can see that, it's the 10 day head future prediction for Amazon stock. We got the predictability indicator as a bar there, and like three day head prediction, five day head prediction, and 10 day head predicted values. So we simply provide like uh, 10 day look aheads for every single assets, we provi provide them on the charts, and uh, we also indicate them on the tables. So we update the results on a daily basis. So every day you get like uh, the current predictions for every single asset. Yeah. And we say that the technical analysis is kind of old school, you know, like together with the fundamental analysis. Uh, it's like, you know, you need to spend too much time, too much effort, and like you gotta spend too much money uh, for many years to, you know, like, get the necessary experience and still there's no guarantee that you're gonna make money because like only five to ten percent of all traders are uh, successful making profits continuously using the technical analysis so we gotta come up with a better method to uh, analyze the charts and like financial data and also there's a factor that traders are biased humans are like uh, emotional so when they do the trades when they analyze the charts and stuff so they're like uh, kind of biased and emotional and they're like more inclined to the stocks that they love and so on so um, yeah we got one single algorithm that predicts every different you know like uh, many kinds of financial assets uh, that analyzes the time series characteristics you know like extracting the trends and like uh, seasonality and residuals as well. So these algorithms, you know, like manipulate large data sets, process the data, uh, and feed that into the neural network. And the neural network learns the uh, time series dependencies, characteristics, and features. Uh, this algorithm also, you know, like automates whole process, you know, like collects the data, pre-processes that, you know, like uh, manipulates the data sets, deals with outliers and stuff uh, and amateur and professional traders are utilizing our algorithms also we are looking to expand into large financial institutions and yeah which kinds of financial data can be utilized in uh, <coughs> predictions so simply the assets open eye low close values uh, some technical indicators like RSI uh, yeah, momentums and some moving averages, MACDs, EMAs, or like some other kinds of oscillators and stuff. Uh, also some like, we don't utilize the events right now, but like discrete uh, events like earnings releases and like dividends and these kind of things can be utilized uh, in financial prediction as well. Uh, also, you can use like qualitative data, you know, like utilizing NLP tools, uh, and you can turn qualitative data into quantitative data and then feed that into the neural network. You can get the market sentiment, uh, like from Twitter data, or like you can fetch news data on like CNN and NBC and stuff. Uh, also, you can utilize like some traders' moods on stock to its say, yeah. And uh, the neural network structure, it's like um, 
you know, the ne deep neural networks, you know, get the inputs, uh, pass it through a process, and like the structure itself is like uh, using a backpropagation algorithm that uh, adjusts weights by minimizing the loss function. And what is important here is to increase the generalization capability. So how do we increase the uh, generalization capability? It's like, uh, yeah, it's not that we're going to need a GPU, but yeah, we definitely need a GPU. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, uh, the principal component analysis, when you have like too many different data sets, right, uh, you get the data sets and calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and transform that into an orthogonal format. And then you try to uh, maximize the uh, variances and stuff and then uh, let's say when you have like 20 data sets, you, you like uh, transform that into a new format and uh, you're not losing a significant amount of accuracy, significant amount of information, and then you have like a uh, decreased number of features that you can utilize uh, in order to, you know, like, in order to decrease the uh, computation time and network complexity. Uh, also, the neural network problems are not, you know, like convex problems that have like one single global minimum, but instead it's something like, you know, like going up and down, up and down, up and down, and like you gotta find the correct place. Uh, and there's this problem of getting stuck at the local minimums while searching for the global minimum. Uh, doing that, you know, like we got some computational resources and time constraints, and we gotta optimize the learning process. So we utilize some optimizers to. Uh, you know, like find the global minimum. Some algorithms might converge faster. Uh, some algorithms might converge like later, but finding the global minimum is an issue in neural networks. And we got some ways, you know, like k-fold cross-validation. Uh, cross validation. It's like you separate the data set into training validation and test sets, and you change the percentages, and you try to get figure out what works the best. And also selection of the loss function, uh, MSC, MAE, MAPI, or something, which one works best for you, or like you can include some regularization term. Uh, also choosing the correct optimizer, like um, we mostly use like gradient descent, but you can utilize like uh, stochastic gradient descent, atom optimizer, or like adegrad. So choosing them is also important to get the convergence. Also you can uh, use parameter sweep techniques for like uh, determining on how many hidden nodes and hidden layers and some other parameters to use when you're designing your neural network structure. And also while doing this, you can use a uh, hard grid search method or like random search like from there or there. And like you can use a smarter version of, you know, like Bayesian optimization you can utilize. Uh, yeah, the main thing I believe is the uh, number of training samples the relationship between the number of training samples and number of unknown parameters. So the number of training equations, the number of samples, must be much larger than the number of unknown parameters. Uh, because otherwise, you're going to overfit the data. Uh, yeah, your network might generalize well, uh, might learn well, but might not be generalizing well. Yeah, so these are the you know, like equations to calculate number of weights and training equations. And yeah, we utilize cross-validation methods. We hold out some part, you know, like some part for testing. We're not using this part for training the neural network. And uh, test set is mostly utilized for, you know, like measuring the generalization errors and stuff. And also we gotta, we utilize the uh, validation stopping. Yeah, after some epochs, like let's say 10 epochs, 20 epochs, 30 epochs, uh, as you go this direction, right? Uh, the training error decreases. Your network learns well, right, after some epochs. But you might not be generalizing well as your validation error increases. So at this point where your validation error starts to increase, you got to stop learning. you got to stop training, actually, uh, so that your neural network still continues to generalize well. And some regularization method is methods are used for, you know, like increasing the generalization capabilities. Uh, normally, it's like uh, there's a MSC term right there, and we have added a regularization term to penalize for large weights. So we don't want the uh, network to be too complex, as we don't want the network weights to be go too higher, as it's going to probably overfit the data. And also, dropout method can be utilized 
you know, like it just randomly, this can be utilized for larger neural networks. And uh, dropout method randomly chooses some uh, nodes, some neurons, and then it just turns them off and also removes the connections to get a better generalizing uh, neural network structure. And what we utilize here is, uh, this is just an example of our predictions. So yellow one is the historical data, blue one is the prediction, and like yellow dotted one is the real market movement. So we don't provide only you know, buy or sell signals, but we try to model the uh, future price movements as well. You can go to our blog page for past prediction performances like these ones. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>